shouldn't be afraid to step out and dance because we, we have been made set free by him. We have been made set free, and his blood covers all. His blood covers all. So as we stand, let's worship.
he for you I bow come on sing it to him this morning the veil is torn and the doors spring wide I see glory as I run inside your throne room before Oh 
That welcomes me, the kindness of mercy that barred with blood wholeheartedly, my soul undeserving.
scheme this morning is to try to get us to forget what the Lord's already done for us. And the Lord's speaking this morning. He's just saying, remember what I've already done for you. The promises that I've already made for you are yes and amen. So remember this morning, church, Bethesda, as we worship what he's already done. Let's sing this again. Remember. And should this life bring suffering Lord I will remember what Calvary has bought for me both now and forever and God you're so So good to us, God, you're so good, you're so Oh, good to 
And God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good. If he's been good to you this morning, give him some praise. Give him some praise. Come on, if he's been good to you this morning, give him praise. Come on, he's worthy of our praise this morning. And a little loud. Amen. We're, I pray that that's all of our testimony this morning and as he is writing your story that he is so good he is good to you you can you can close your eyes you can meditate on him and and just know the goodness of god and you see that you can see that working in your life he gives us many promises right many promises if we stick to his plan now we can get outside of his plan and uh, we'll, we'll pay for some things, that, uh, mistakes, some bad decisions. And you can turn me down just a little bit, please. Uh, Joshua 1 and 8. We're going to worship the Lord in our giving this morning. Joshua 1 and 8 is uh, full of promise here as, as Joshua is getting ready to leave after Moses. It says, do not let the book of this law depart from your mouth, but meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything that's written in it. Now catch that, that you may be careful to do everything that is written in it. And it's an instruction for our life. Uh, Bethesda pushes, you should know that by now, knowing the word where we don't err, where we don't mess up, where we lead that good life unto the Lord. He loves us unconditionally, and that's just awesome. Man, if it's based on my performance, he probably wouldn't love me if that's what it was based on, you know, because I flip-flop too many times. But he loves us unconditionally, but he gives us an outline, even down to the giving, to the worshiping. So much said in the, in the scriptures about giving. Give and it'll be given to you. Better to give than to receive. Multiple places. But here he says... Uh, be careful to do everything that's written within it, and you then you will be prosperous and successful. Now, who doesn't like that? Who doesn't like what you put your hands to to be successful? It's not.
not just talking to finances, your life. You want your life to count for something. You want it to count for good. And when God's in it, it's good. Kim and I have been amazed at our little garden. And we give God the glory. We've got two tomato plants. And we've already canned, I forget how many quarts, 16 quarts of tomatoes. I was talking with my neighbor. I said, listen, you need a tomato, help yourself. Or bell pepper, best ones I've ever raised. He saw, he had to go buy tomatoes. He said, you're one of the first I've talked to. I just give it the praise to the Lord. But we want everything that we're doing to be prosperous and successful. He promises us here, if you will meditate on that word day and night, do what it says, then he will bless you. He wants our obedience, church. He wants our obedience. This morning, we're going to worship him in giving tithes and offerings and alms because he is so good to us. And it's not that we're looking for successful. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. He is true. Father, we love you this morning. And that's that's why we, we do what we do, God. Because you first loved us. You went to the cross for us. And you love us unconditionally. And God, we thank you for this life. We thank you for this plan that you have laid out for us, God. And we, we want our work to be prosperous and successful. We want to do it as unto you, Lord. Whether it's mowing the grass, whether it's packing boxes of food, we want it to be successful unto you, to give you praise and honor. Father, bless the tithe and offering this morning. Bless the church, God, as we grow and follow after you. In Jesus' name. family and friends on, on the internet there. We're happy to see everybody here. Uh, again, we're just, uh, my, myself and my beautiful wife, Jessica, we're uh, home group pastors, first church pastors, I'm sorry. And uh, this is going to be uh, the last week for sign up for first church. Uh, but we don't want you to be discouraged that if uh, a couple weeks down the road or whatever, work changes, your schedule changes, and you're open to be able to, to join one of our classes, don't feel uh, that you can't. We're still going to be open. We're open all year round. So don't feel that, you know, you can you can sign up anytime, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, we got a few events coming up. Uh, September 3rd, we're going to have corporate prayer. Uh, I don't know how to say it, but it's how important it is and how much of a blessing we get just being here as, as, a, as a family and uh, praying together and just uh, being together and uh, and, and sharing one another's uh, burdens and excitements. September 4th um, is our new First Church Meetings Begin. <laughs> amen, amen. And on September 15th and 16th, we're going to have a, a state family fest located at, I hope I pronounced this right, located at Camp Kaneo, Can Kanakayo. Sorry, sorry, calm down. <laughs> More information coming soon. <laughs> and uh, another thing we have with the sign-ups, we'll be out there um, during a meet and greet, but we got new sign-ups coming up for Bethesda's info class and the gift class. Uh, Jessica and I, this uh, first church that we had that we've had, that we came that offered these classes. And um, and I'm telling you, they're, they're a blessing in, in, in a way that because we want to ask questions. We want to know about the church that we were going to get involved with, and uh, have the info class gives us gave you gave us that gave us the information that we needed to know what the church stood for and what what their beliefs were, and uh, and then the gift class. We have never had a gift class before, and so um, if you don't know what your giftings are, uh, it's time to start looking and start start searching, because uh, that's how God's going to use you and what He uh, created you to be and, and for His will. 
So that would be September 17th, the uh, info class at 4 p.m. will be here. And the gift class will be on October 8th at 4 p.m. September 25th at 5 p.m. is Feeding America at 300 Peterson Drive in Elizabethtown. Also, I was told this morning that they're doing it tomorrow as well. Tomorrow's, and um, because school's starting back, they're going to do backpacks along with boxes of food. <laughs> and September 29th, the men's camp out. I'm definitely going to get in touch with Pastor Fred because I don't, I don't know what that's going to entail. But you can contact Pastor Fred. We all know who Pastor Fred is um, for more information. That's for all you men, so get involved. Okay, Camp Roar Day Camp, ages 5 to 6 at Camp Nakayo. Uh, for more information, uh, you can go to kycogop.org. All right. Like I said, this is the last um, for us to be up here to uh, push the first church sign up. But I'm excited because we have uh, three new pastors coming on board with us. And uh, I'm going to introduce them as they come walking up. Uh, Ms. Pastor Patty. Pastor Laura and Pastor uh, Nate. <laughs> I almost forgot his name for some reason. Good morning. <laughs> anyway, so my name's Patty Alberino, and I'm doing a, I'm co leading with Laura. And I'm so excited to um, be with her and doing this morning uh, first church group at 11 o'clock at 333 Robin Road here in Newtown. Yay! And why are you doing this? Well, because I want to be part of the group, and it's very hard for me to do it in the evenings. So I talked with God, and he came up with the idea that we'll have a morning group. And I'm excited and ready because I want to be a part of the group as well. Amen. Amen. So excited. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nathan. Uh, I have the privilege of uh, hosting my first, uh, first church group. And just really, yeah, just very excited uh, for the opportunity. I love fellowship. I love gathering with other believers and growing closer with each other and closer uh, in the word. And it's, it's, a, it's just so cool that we get to add two more groups because of so many signups. I mean, that's something to praise the Lord about right there. So. But yeah, uh, sign-ups are out there, so if you're not signed up, uh, I would love to have you. Patty and Laura would love to have you, so uh, get signed up. We're excited to see what God does in those, in those meetings. Uh, we thank them and, and thank the Lord to move in their hearts to be part of it. And like he said, I mean, we, we want to get to a point where everybody's involved until we're just overfilled in all of our, in our meetings. Um, at this time, we're going to take our time where we do uh, what we normally do at this time, and that's meet and greet. So whatever you do, fist bump, clap, hug, whatever, uh, let's go ahead and do that.
fall out of love. Don't, don't pay attention a lot to Facebook. People just, people just show, we show as Christians sometimes, we show that we really don't understand God. God loved me while I was in my father's loins. He loved me and knew my name when I was in my mother's womb. He loved me when I was just a kid. Had no direction and no hope. God loved me when I was 11 years old all the way through until I was 18 and gave my heart to the Lord and lived like a, a little demon on the earth. And I mean literally. But you know what? In the midst of all that, God loved me. Matter of fact, I, I want you to know something. Listen, God loved me just as much then as he does now. Don't let nobody tell you no different. You know why? God's love is perfect. It's not in measurements like ours. We love people as long as they do what we want them to do. And when they don't, our love diminishes a little bit. But how many of you know God doesn't work that way? Thank you, Lord, that you're not falling in love with me. You're already in love with me. That was free, had nothing to do with what I'm speaking on today. If you want to know the truth. I want to talk to us some more about kingdom life. We've talked about entering into the kingdom of God, what has to take place. We've talked about how important it is to understand divine flow and the flow of authority. We looked at the umbrellas of how God moves when he made man as um, someone who would be the head of his household, that he would cover his wife and cover his children and, and walk in relationship with the Lord and do the things that God wants him to do. We also looked at the umbrella of authority, how it flows in the church with the elders being ordained and then from there the elders appointing others to do works of ministry. We saw how important it was for us to, in, as, as Ephesians 4 says, to equip the saints. How many of you know we're equipping saints? We're not training up leaders. We're equipping saints. And from that equipping, then, we then have leaders that are produced. God's looking for people of character, not necessarily gifting. Did you hear me? You can be gifted and be a mess. But when you have character, God can take your gifting and do with it what he wants to. Right? And we looked at all that and we talked about all that. We talked about how important it is to make sure that we are in alignment with the proper flow of authority. That we don't get outside of our lane. That we stay in our lane. Do what we're called to do. And be what we're called to be. And make sure that we are submitting ourselves to that that God has ordained. Amen? Amen. That we walk in that, live in that. Why? Because... Those that God's ordained, they are watchmen. They are watching out for your soul. They're watching out to help you to become everything that God wants you to be. And so like any good parents, they give to you the milk first. Milk before meat. We don't try to give somebody a T-bone steak when they should be having some pablum. Amen? I know every Christian wants to jump from being born again and an infant to knowing all about the end times. But there's a lot in between that that we need to know before we understand any of that. And so there's a flow of authority. Well, what are we then? We are what? Citizens of the kingdom. Aren't you glad you're a citizen of the kingdom? Yes. That, that you are no longer a foreigner or a stranger, but now you are a part of that kingdom, the kingdom of God in which you have given your allegiance to the king. 
And we know that we have a King of kings and a Lord of lords, don't we? His name is Jesus. And we are his ambassadors. In other words, we're not representing ourselves. We are representing him and his kingdom. So what do I have to do? I have to make sure that I'm speaking what he speaks concerning the kingdom. Not my ideas or my opinions. Do you know some things that God says about his kingdom and about what he wants to do? It sometimes rubs me the wrong way. Hello? Anybody else? Sometimes I I say, oh God, really? And God says, yeah, really. And then what do I do? What? What do I do? Obey. Today I want to talk to us about the choice of obedience. The choice of obedience. Of obedience and it is a choice it is a choice it's a choice that we make the Bible tells us that our life is full of a bunch of choices Deuteronomy um, chapter 30 11 through 20 says this for this commandment which I command you today is not too mysterious for you this is Moses talking to the children of Israel Nor is it far um, off. It is not in heaven that you should say, that you should say, who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it. Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very near you, in your mouth, and in your heart, that you may do it. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. In that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments, that you may live and multiply And the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. Now listen, what does he say there? Here you are, you don't have to go far to know the word of the Lord. You don't have to go into heaven. You don't have to have somebody bring it to you. You don't have to go search the seas for somebody to come and tell you. The word of the Lord is nigh unto you. It is in your mouth and in your heart that you can do the things that God wants you to do. And you have no excuse. I'm going to tell you what what he's going to do, though. He said, set before you today is life. Set before you today is life and good. Good and evil is set before us. Death and evil is set before us. And it's up to us to choose. He goes on and he says in verse 17, But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, Therefore, choose life, that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them this land. God speaks real clear to us that there is no excuse to us as God's people for not knowing God's word. Moses spent the last 40 years teaching them what God had revealed. Most people in this church today, not everybody, but people that are in this church today have been told what the word of the Lord says. We have been told that 
It's not necessary for us to go out and pray and ask God what his will is because we have his will right before us. We sometimes spend a lot of uh, fruitless prayer time praying for God's will. And if we would listen when we pray that, God would be saying, I've already shown you my will. Now you just obey and do it. Because it really is about obedience. It is about willingness, an attitude of our heart towards God. It is about us being willing to obey. If ever they strayed from God's path, it would not be for the lack of knowledge. It would be a choice they made. Listen, when, when I go to the right or the left, how many of you know we're not supposed to go to the right or the left? Huh? How many of you know that we are not supposed to go to the right or the left? How many of you know we're not supposed to go to the right or the left? Some people say in the church today that we just blow off the fact that we go to the right or the left as though it's no big deal. Everybody goes to the right or the left. Now, we can say that to some extent that's true. Everybody does fall short. Doesn't the Bible say we have all fallen short of the glory of God? Does the Bible not say that when you sin, you have an advocate with the Father who is Jesus Christ our Lord, and that God's grace covers a multitude of sins? Doesn't he say that? Doesn't he teach us that? Well, by that, don't we know that you and I are in a battle of the flesh and the spirit and that sometimes we go to the right or the left, but yet even though that's true, we should not accept the fact that that's what we have to do. We should be looking, we should be looking not to ever stray from God's path. But when we do stray... We cannot look at God and say, well, God, I just didn't know. Hello? When we go to the right or the left, it's not because of the lack of knowledge. It's a choice that we make. The Bible says in the last days, people are going to do what's good in their own eyes. People in the last days are going to call evil good and good evil. It's no shock to us, and we should not be surprised that we are living in those days today. We are walking in those times today. People today don't know right from wrong. People today cannot discern um, good from evil. Even people within the church. Even people within the church. Even people still at Bethesda. They can't discern right from wrong. But I want you to know, it's not because we don't know. It's because we choose to do it. Knowing all the time that what we're doing is not right. Come on. But because of where we're at at that moment, we do it anyway. Hello? Paul said to us in Romans chapter 7, which has been covered here in the church many times, he, he tells us in Romans chapter 7, he says, when I go to do good, evil's present. The things that I would do, I find myself not doing. And the things that I want to do, or, or wouldn't do, I find myself doing. And the things that I don't want to do, I, don't, I find myself doing those things. Why? Because there is a war going on. We're in a battle, the battle between flesh and spirit. What is that battle over? It's for our soul. Come on. God wants to lift up our soul. God wants to save our soul. I I want you to know something today. I'm saved. How many of you are saved? Raise your hand and wave it like this. Come on, if you know you're saved, wave your hand, wave your hand, wave your hand. So I know who to get in the altar before the service is over. Really, if you're three rows back, I can't see anyway. But anyhow, (laughs) I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. But listen, I'm also being saved. 
I am saved by the blood of the Lamb. He has washed me and forgiven me of my, of me of my sins. He has cleansed me from the past, the present, and the future. And the, He is transforming my life every day that I allow Him to do it with the washing of the water by the Word. Yes. Moses, though, wanted to take away their possible excuses that the people might have. How many of you know we are a people of excuses? We are a people of excuses. We have an excuse for everything. Well, if, if Sarita wouldn't have done this, then I wouldn't have acted that way. Hello? If Jerry wouldn't have done this, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have acted that. If Jerry would just be a better husband submitting himself to the word, I wouldn't be so trying to be in control. Or if my boss wouldn't treat me this way, I could do a lot better. If teachers weren't this way, if my friends weren't this way, if this wasn't that way, if the world wasn't going the way it's going, then I wouldn't be such a mess. We have excuses, 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 excuses that we have for not following after the will of God or for not making good choices. I've had people sit in my office there and tell me, I just don't know what to do. And I want you to know that's a lie from hell. And if you've ever been in the office with me, talking with me, you know that I just don't let that pass by. I tell them that's a lie from hell. You do know what to do. And the very first thing you have to do is you have to obey God and surrender yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to be willing to die to self. Luke 9, 23 tells us, if you're going to be my disciple, you have to deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me daily. Come on. Amen. If you're fighting the enemy today, the scripture says, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. People are walking around going, I just don't understand. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's going on. I fight the devil. I rebuke the devil. But it just doesn't seem like I get any victory. It's drama, drama, drama. It's problems, problems, problems. Well, listen, you can rebuke the devil all day long and all night. You can cast him out in Jesus' name. But until you submit to God, he is not going to flee. Until you obey the Lord's commands. Man, but look what God says when we do obey his commands. Huh? Oh, I'll bless you. I'll keep you. I'll provide for you. Is God a liar? Huh? I'll take care of you. And listen, it even goes way further than that. Not only will I take care of you, Richard and Jessica... I'll take care of your children. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Come on, somebody. Somebody that's got a kid here that doesn't know Jesus, and you're following after God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. You ought to be shouting with me today because God said, if you will do what I say, I will bless you, and I will bless your children. Amen. Come on. Man, that's a promise of God. But, how many, of you, how many of you are like me? Oh, I can't say. That's not going to sound good. <laughs> I, I was going to say, how many of y'all hate butts? But, I mean, that don't sound good. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, man, I got to pull this back now. You know, things like if, therefore, those things are in the scripture. Sometimes it's like, oh, man, God, I really liked what you said right here. But what are you talking about, God, that therefore? What's that therefore, therefore? Why did you have to go and ruin it, God? 
Why did you have to go and do that? And I, I mean, I was really loving this right here. There is therefore now no, condemnation. now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Woo! Everybody stops right there and shouts. But he says the only way there's no condemnation, the only way that it's not going to happen to you, is he goes on the next few verses, if you walk in the Spirit. If you don't walk, if you don't walk in the spirit, what are you walking in? What happens when we walk in the flesh? What are we doing? Huh? We're failing and we're sinning. Right? Do you know that if you're walking in the flesh, like if you get caught off on idle talk, if you get caught off on gossip, if you get caught off on strife, if you get caught out there in the midst of a thing to where some well-intentioned dragon is trying to tell you why they're telling you all this stuff and you're sitting there soaking it, if you get caught off in the flesh, you're sinning. You don't need to partake in that. When we walk in the flesh, we have condemnation. How many of you feel bad when you know you're walking, in, when you realize, man, I'm walking in the flesh? Now, how many of you are thankful that you have the truth and Paul said, you know, all these things, evil's present. I don't do the things I should do, and I do the things I shouldn't do. When all these things are present, who in the world's going to deliver me from this body of death? How many of you are thankful that Paul said, wait a minute, I know who it is. It's Jesus Christ the Lord, that he will deliver me from all of this if I obey his voice. If I obey his word, not just be religious. You see... The real sign of whether you're born again, truly born again, is obedience. My sons are my sons, and how they prove it is in their obedience to their father. I want you to know my sons don't live underneath my roof. They have their own families. I don't run their households. But I want to tell you what. As their father, if I went and told them something that was within reason and not some wacko thing, but if I went and directed them in something, guess what? They would do everything they could to obey what I spoke to them. They're my sons. You and I, one of the reasons we know we're a child of God is we want to obey him and follow after him. God doesn't want us to use excuses. He wants us to be willing and have the right attitude to do what he said. Moses wiped out those excuses and when he said, who will ascend into heaven to get it or proclaim it so we may obey? Who's going to go get it for us? Who's going to tell me? Do you know that God doesn't want the leadership of this church, the eldership of this church, to have to tell you every single day on what you should do and how you should walk and how you should go about things? Do you know that's not our goal to sit here and tell you all that? Do you know what our goal is? Our goal is that we would give you the milk and that as you started eating meat, you could stand on your own two feet and you would do what God says for you to do without somebody having to tell you. Who will cross the sea, he said. Oh, you don't need anybody to cross the sea. It's nigh unto you right now. Both things sounded logical to consider the fact that Moses, the proclaimer of God's truth, is about to leave them. Moses is getting ready to go. They're panicking. They're in a worry. It's almost in the same scenario that would happen some thousand years later or so. That it happened when Jesus was getting ready to leave the disciples. Jesus was getting ready to leave them. Moses was getting ready to leave them. Wait a minute, Moses, if you're going, who's going to go get the word for us? No need. The word has already been given. It's near you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. God's will has been fully revealed. He has spoken. The issue now is not for a lack of revelation. It is a call for obedience. Church, do you hear me? We, we do need revelation on some things. I'm not saying that we have all the revelation of everything that God says. But I want you to know something. We have enough revelation on stuff to make it into glory. 
We have enough revelation if we'll walk it out to live for Jesus, to walk with him and serve him and commit ourselves to him. And if we'll just be obedient to him, we've got enough understanding and revelation that we should be prospering and walking in the things of God, living this life by faith and living this life in the power of God not too difficult nor is it beyond our reach god is right he's not dangling a carrot out in front of us saying oh come on come on come on come on come on just a little further come on no it's about us surrendering most of the time people aren't getting anywhere with god because they're not walking in obedience obedience is possible come on obedience is possible Obedience is possible. Here's the issue. But are we willing? It is, it is the biggest question that there is. It, it, it is not hard for us to understand why things are going the way they're going in our lives. Pastor Doug Spainhauer and I, we talk quite often. And I remember one time I was saying something to him and I was saying, Pastor Doug, you know what? I just don't understand. And he looked back at me and he goes, really? And I'm like, all right, are you being sarcastic? <laughs> Not that that would ever be anything you would ask Pastor Doug. Now, if it was Pastor Doug Gibson, I probably would have said, uh, why? What's wrong? <laughs> Pastor Doug, I had to say, are, are you being sarcastic? What are you talking about, really? Because, and, and, what he, and he said it. What he was saying was, no, we know why. Huh? When, when, he, when you're looking at your life and it's, and it's, it's full of heartache and misery and drama and, and, and attacks and, and all kinds of stuff going on and you want us to pray for you. I, I want to tell you something. We in this church, we in this church, we in this leadership, we're going to get to the place where we don't pray amiss. Did you hear me? Because, listen, if I, if I have... Separate your notes and stuff and come here with me there. If Richard comes up and he's saying, brother, I, I, and he's got enough prayer, and I come up to him, and I, I say, hey, what, what are you up here for? And he says, brother, I'm having a lot of struggles and battles and fights, and, 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 and I'm having issues and some health issues and some things of that nature. You know what I need to do with him? Now, this is what we normally do is, what we normally do is, we go, Father, in the name of Jesus, touch my brother. Father, set him free. God deliver him from this attack of the enemy, isn't it? It's what we do. Isn't that good? Or we just start speaking in tongues in his ear, thinking that that's going to get him delivered. It, isn't that what we do? But do you know sometimes people are where they're at because God's got them there. And I'm coming up and I'm, I'm laying hands on him and I'm, I'm casting out the devil. I'm breaking off any spirit. Not, not Because that's what we've known to do. But here's what we should do. We should say, well, brother, you're going through all these things. How is your intimacy with Christ? How is, I, I want to ask you a couple questions. How is your intimacy with Christ going? How is your devotion life? Now, I'm not talking about going and reading through just a little devotion. Or I'm not talking about, I, I know that you've been an every man, a warrior, and you, you do a quiet time. I'm not talking about just reading through some uh, uh, devotional in the morning or just making the check the box, I've had my quiet time. I'm talking about what have you done with that quiet time and your intimacy with God on around the day. Yeah. How's that going with you? Well, brother, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, help my brother Richard to have a devotional life, to serve you, to walk with you, to walk in the Spirit so that he can combat these things that come against him. But I'm not going to stop there, and I know you're going to have a problem with this, but it's okay, because it don't matter to me if you have a problem or not. But I'm going to ask Richard something else. Hey, Richard, how's your stewardship? Huh? I said, you, how's your stewardship? How are you stewarding your time? 
you, you know, do you have time for First Church? Do you have time for Every Man a Warrior if there's not been in it? Do you have time to, to, to learn and to draw in? Are you stewarding your time? How's your stewarding of your time going? Because I know you're a man that spends hours working out trying to get this back into shape. <laughs> so how's your time going, brother? How's that working? How are you stewarding that? And I'm also asking, how are you stewarding your finances? Are you a tither, Brother Richard? Are you a, a giver? Do you give offerings? Do you, do you give to the things of God? You say, man, why would you ask that? Because, listen, most of our problems stem from our disobedience. Yeah. Right. Most of the things that's raining down on our families is because we're not obedient to the Word. We're sitting and wondering, why is God allowing all this? Father, the devil's attacking me. Sometimes we're praying and telling God the devil's attacking us. When it's not the devil, God is allowing it to happen. Not only is God allowing it to happen, sometimes he's doing it for what? To get our attention. And when we are not faithful, tithers and givers, when we're not faithful in our devotional to God, I want you to know the Bible says when you're not faithful to that, he does not rebuke the devourer. In other words, the devourer comes and he begins to steal your fruit. He begins to devour you and to consume you. You want to know why we believe today in being faithful in tithes, offerings, and all? Because if you don't do it, you're robbing God. You say, oh, yeah, well, Bethesda just wants our money. Listen, listen to me. Please get this through your heads. Our God is going to supply Bethesda all of our needs according to his riches and glory, no matter what you do. Man, I've been through in 13 years the drawing back of finances because people weren't happy. I've been through here in 13 years people trying to see if they couldn't get us to take off and leave. I've been through it in 13 years people leaving and taking their finances. But I want you to know we're still right here and we're still doing because that's not what I depend on. I depend on the things that God has for me. So we're not out here after your money because Bethesda has to have it or we're going under. That's not what it is. I'll tell you what we want. We want the best for you and your family. I don't want you to have the enemy gnawing at you constantly. I don't want you to have the enemy tearing holes in your pockets and it's running out, and you just can't figure out why is it going so fast. It just seems like we don't never have anything. It seems like we're always struggling. Well, listen, I'm just telling you right now, if you tip God, if you're not a good steward, then don't worry. It's going to come against you. The enemy's going to come and eat away. Sometimes you may be having health issues because you're being disobedient to God. I know this is not popular theology because we're in an eat, drink, and be merry time. We are at a time in church where everybody wants to have their ears itched. But I'm just going to tell you, when you come here, you're not going to get tickling of your ear. I'm obligated, the elders of this church are obligated to tell you the truth and love the best that we can to let you know God's for you, not against you, but... If we do not obey the Lord, we have to deal with the consequences. Amen. That's why I am li limiting my counsel to people that take it. <laughs> oh, you mean to tell me you won't meet with me? Oh, yes, I will. And then I'm going to tell you what the word says. And if you come back to me next week in the same shape, I'm going to tell you, see you later. Come back to me when you start doing what I told you last week. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. You're coming to me. You're coming to the elders to solve your issues and to help you find a way out when you don't do what you should do. Right. We can't help you. Come on. Yeah. You, want to tell, you want the truth, right? Yeah. We can't help you. Because, listen, it's not about what God wants me to do. 
Am I willing to do it? It's clear what God says in his word. Do it. What did Moses tell him? Do it. Choose right. I'll bless you. I'll take you into the land. I'll bless you. But I'm not going to just bless you. I'm going to bless your children and your children's children. I'm going to pour out on you until you can't even contain it. How many of you want that kind of blessing today? Everybody that wants that kind of blessing, just real fast, jump up and wave your hand to the Lord. I want that blessing that I cannot contain. Stand up, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it. That's what I want, God. Okay, sit down. Then what you just now said to God, I'm willing to do, God, what you said for me to have that. Amen? Amen. God said, you robbed me. Where did we rob you at, God? Tithes and offerings? Try me. (laughs) Can you just imagine that? Who do we think we are trying God? But God said, okay, try me. Try me and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you cannot contain. Other words, man, it would be pressed down, shaken together, running over. Will I cause men to give in your bosom? Other words, everybody around you is going to know, man, you're prospering. Is that what you want? I would have thought that we would really be shouting. No excuse is good enough. Seek the Lord with all your heart. With all your mind, with all your strength and soul, love the Lord God. Love the Lord God. That's what he's after. He is right. It's about willingness, about an attitude of our hearts. If we are honest, the main problem for Israel and for us today when it comes to obedience to God is not ignorance, it is defiance. It's defiance. I'm just not doing that. And then we want to lay it all on the church, our leadership, expecting too much of us. Listen, I want to tell you something. This is not my expectation. If you think this is my expectations, please come this week and meet with me and let's talk about the scriptures. These are not the elders' expectations of the church. These are God's. This is what the word of the Lord says. Huh? People say, well, you guys got too many rules. Too many what? Do you know the Bible's full of rules? Laws? Huh? Do you know what he says about those laws? Those laws can't save you. That means you can't just check the box, as we've heard preached here before, and think that because you checked all the boxes, it's all good because it comes back to also not just that you got the box checked, but the attitude in which you're checking that box. Why are you checking the box? Out of duty? Out of religiosity? Then you're failing God. You're falling short. You you have the letter of the law, but you don't understand the spirit of it. Do you know everything that we're talking to you about is not with a hammer? I know I get boisterous and loud, but it's not about smacking you in the face. It's not about nailing you high. It's not about making you to to feel like that, man, you're lower than low. It's not about that. It's about me coming to you with love to try to tell you, look, man, you can do it, brother. You can be what God wants you to be. All it takes is you stop defying God and be obedient. All it takes is us being good citizens of the kingdom. Because, listen, it's not about the hammer. It's about the Spirit. And the Spirit says that we want you to walk in His will and His ways. It's about that. So how do I cultivate this willingness? I really truly believe this. The reason why the willingness is not there is because we don't have a relationship with the one who we need to be willing to. Did you hear me? Because listen, 
we cultivate our obedience through intimacy with God. Obedience flows from a relationship. Hello? I want to do what pleases Sarita because of our relationship. And when I don't do what I know pleases her and I do something else, it crushes me because of our relationship. I can't just walk around as though everything's okay. I have to come to her and tell her, I'm sorry, I apologize, forgive me. Why? Because it's built out of a relationship. The love is there, not because I, it's a duty for me to love. It's there because of our relationship. I want you to know something. I didn't, I told Sarita, I, I asked Sarita to marry me. Now hold on to your hat now. I asked Sarita to marry me about four days after um, I went out with her once. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm not slow at acting. I, I move quick. Six months from then, we were married. But I, can, I, I told Sarita, when I asked her, I said, I, I, I want to ask you something. You don't have to answer me. I want to ask you to marry me. I love you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Do you know what I realized? I, 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 I didn't realize this at first because I didn't do right. I was... Ignorant, Nobody coached me. Nobody helped me. But I went to her father to ask if it was okay not to date her. We had already started seeing each other, but to marry her. And he told me that, you know, you don't love each other. You're just infatuated. And so, you know, the answer is no. And I said to him, like like, like stupid person, I said to him, um, because uh, he said, you guys aren't thinking. And I said to him, oh, no, we're thinking. Because if we weren't thinking, I'm 21, she's 18, we just would have run off and got married. How many of you know that that's probably not a wise thing to say to somebody who is serving the Lord? Much less to somebody who doesn't and isn't serving the Lord. Needless to say, he rose up on his chair, pointed his finger at me, and said, that had never happened, no man will ever do that, and went to bed. And I'm thinking, well, okay, well, we'll we're going to get married. Yeah. We're going to get married. But what I found out as we went along Six months wasn't a long time. And listen, our six months wasn't really six months. Our six months was me traveling three, three and a half weeks, preaching, holding revivals, coming in, seeing her for a couple of days, then going right back out again. So I, I, if we accumulated a whole month's worth of seeing each other during that six months, it'd be probably amazing. So we really only was, was around each other a month, maybe a month and a half at that. that. How many of you know? How many of you know that's quick? But it was the Lord. She's made it this far. Hopefully she can make it further. I feel like I got a few more good years left. Hold on, honey. We can still do it. Make it to the end. But something I realize is this. Her dad was right. I really didn't love her. Huh? According to what I understood as love, I did. But you know when love came? Love came as we said I do. Love came as we walked it out. Love developed more as a choice. Yes. I chose to love her. She chose to love me because in that walking it out, there was plenty of days when I wasn't lovable. She chose to love me when, when I was insensitive, when she was crying in the bed next to me, and, and, and I'm not sensitive. I'm, I'm thinking and taking it all, because, you know, it's all about you, all about me, and I'm asking her, what did I do? 
what's wrong? Why are you crying? She would try to tell me, you know, wasn't about me. But, oh, yeah, come on, sure, I know I've done something. What was well, She was homesick. But in the midst of all that, she loved me anyway. She loved my nosy grandmother when my grandmother would not knock and just barge into the room where we were <laughs> staying. Love, though, was developed from a relationship. Obedience to one another, walking into submission to one another, it's developed through relationship, through building a trust. Yeah. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. We obey him because we know he has his best thoughts for us. In Revelation chapter 3, Jesus was addressing the church at Laodicea. Revelation 3, 17, 18 says, You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth, I do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Counsel you, I counsel you to buy of me gold refined in fire, so that you can become rich and white clothes to wear, so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Here's, what, here's where we're at. This is what we're going to finish with. This is where we're at, church. We have become so self-sufficient that we, for, we have forgotten who it is that we need to be depending on. These people that Revelation is talking about here, they felt no need for God. There was no communion. What did he say to them? Wait a minute, I've got something against you. You've left your first love. The communion with God was not there. They were missing out on God's best. They weren't ignorant of it. They just chose not to. They chose not to. What is, what is going to be your choice? Today, he says, I set before you life and death. Serving God, being a part of his kingdom is about obedience and faithfulness and commitment and covenant and walking in the things that God speaks to us. And listen, if we're ignorant, it's our own fault. We've had enough stuff around here that, that people in this church should feel like they are the most equipped to do whatever they need to do. But if we don't know it and we haven't taken advantage of it, who is to blame? But it, the, the great thing about it is it's not too late. It's not too late. His grace, his mercy is everlasting. He's here before us now. It's not too late to be the man that God wants you to be. It's not too late to be the man of God he wants you to be. It's not too late to be the husband or the father he wants you to be. It's not too late to be the wife that God wants you to be, the mother that God wants you to be. It's not too late. It just takes you to stop making excuses for yourself. Oh, Pastor Jerry, that, you're just, you're, you know, you're just, that's just mean. Listen, I'm sorry if that's how you take it. But I'm not trying to be mean. I love every person that's in this place and some that are not in this place. I love them. But your problem, my problem, when everything's going haywire is one of two reasons. Either the enemy's trying everything he can to destroy us or we are just choosing to be rebellious and not be obedient. What you have to determine is which one of those are you? Where do you find yourself today? What is your choice? Is it life? Or is it death? I want you to live. I want you to live. I want you to be what God wants you to be, what he's calling you to be. I want you to live, not die. Stand with me this morning.
choose you this day. Listen, he says this in scripture. Choose you this day whom you will serve. me and my house I'm going to serve the Lord for me and my house I'm going to serve the Lord for Sarit and I we're going to serve the Lord and I'm going to do my part to keep us in obedience to the things of God. She's going to do her part to keep us in obedience to God's will, his plan. Choose you this day. Choose you this day. Know that today, know this, that today, the Holy Spirit is challenging every one of you to make a choice. You can't stay in the center. You can't ride the fence. There's a choice being made today. Mature, immature. And we're going to see a time coming very soon where we're going to see the goats and the sheep. He wants every person today to make a choice. Who are you going to serve? What are you going to choose? You going to choose life? Or are you going to choose death? God's not withholding from us because He wants to. The windows of heaven over you aren't closed because God's just a mean God. Some of you are being deceived because you feel like because you're prospering, then I must be okay how I'm doing. You can prosper all if you you want to in this life. What are you going to do in the next? Sometimes we as Christians, you know, we think, well, you know, I know that was not right, but God forgives me. You brush it off. Go on. And that's true. His grace is sufficient. But I'm going to tell you what, when we don't do right, when we fall short, the Holy Spirit convicts us, we need to fall on our faces before the Lord and cry out repent. And repentance means turning away from and turning to. Turning away from what you were doing and turn to God no matter the pain, no matter the hardship or suffering that you have to go through to turn away. You do it. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Is it going to be life? Is it going to be death? How many of you in this place this morning, you're willing to put the enemy underneath your feet where he belongs? And you're willing to declare, you're willing to declare with your action, I am going to choose life. I am going to choose the Lord. I am by faith surrendering it to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of my faith. How many of you will step out from where you're at, make your way to the river, make your way to the river, make your way to the river and say, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We choose life. Just come up all the way to the front so everybody can get up. Me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Make your choice.
something else and we're going to depart this place to serve every day of our lives you want
want to know why it's not just enough to get up out of bed, feel good about yourself because you had a devotional? Huh? Because the, the real challenge is going to happen when you leave your house. You better keep that word nigh under your heart and in your mouth. Taking the sword of the Spirit and fighting the enemy all day long. Walking in the Spirit. Practicing His presence and His glory. It doesn't matter if you're in a crowd. You can still be praying in the Spirit. You can still be meditating on the Lord. You can still be beholding His beauty all day long. Choosing life. Choosing life. Somebody comes up to you and says, hey, man, I, 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 I want you to pray about this. I just got to tell you about so-and-so. You just need to tell them, no, thank you. I'm choosing life. I'll pray for a situation, but I don't need to know all the gritty details. I'll just give it to the Lord. I'm going to choose life. The enemy's scheme is against you. Choose life. Choose you this day. Hug somebody before you sit down. Let them know. God bless you. Have a great day.